All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event. Uh, we're a webinar, we're a webcast, we're an online show. Um, the terminology is up for debate. So um, whatever you want to call us, we're here live, online, um, every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, if you are unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record our shows every week, and they are posted to our website. And I'll show you at the end of the show where to go to um, watch all of our recordings, our previous shows. Uh, we do a mixture of things here, uh, presentations, interviews, uh, book reviews, mini training sessions, basically anything library related, we are happy to put it on the show and share it with everyone. Um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations, but we often bring in speakers, um, and as we have done this morning, and remotely just from, well, I'm not sure where, elsewhere in Lincoln. <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah, April and I are both in Lincoln, Nebraska today, but we're not together. Um, she's at, are you at the school or where are you? Uh... I'm at my school, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, April Jorgensen is from our Lincoln Public Schools, and I've got her on to talk about this morning. Um, many states uh, um, or cities have done these one book, one community, as well, she puts here, one yeah. state, city, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it, it's all over, um, but they've done one for their school which is a new, I had not heard of this, I'm sure it's gone on elsewhere, but I just um, heard about this, um, that they did this recently. Um, April actually presented about this at our uh, State Library Association and School Library Association conference this past fall, um, and it was a really interesting topic, so I thought it'd be great to have her come on here and share it with more. So um, I'll just hand over to you, April, to take it away and um, tell us what you guys did there. All right, great. I'm really excited to be here. I was looking at the map where everyone's from, and I yes. was like, wow, everyone <laughs> all over the place is interested. I'm so excited. Yeah, we are um, pretty broad with the, the people that come in to watch the show. It's, it's cool, <laughs> I think. Yeah, it is great. Yeah. Um, I am excited because this is literally the best thing I've ever done as a librarian. <laughs> and wow. I, okay. I tell everyone. I tell <laughs> everyone. And... Um, so I can't wait to tell you this is mostly our experience at my school, so I know your experiences might be different should you try to undertake a similar um, program, but uh, I think there's a lot to take away, and we've learned a lot, and there's some really great books I get to share with you, so mm. let's get started, I guess. Great, yep. And feel free to ask questions, and Krista said she'll, if you type them or whatever, she'll let me know, too. Yep, I can grab any questions. You can use the questions section or just ask me to unmute you, and you can use your own microphone if you have one available to um, ask. Sounds good. So <clears throat> at my school is named SCO Middle School, named after a former superintendent, so it is spelled right. Um, so we call our program One Book, One SCO. And we just call it a community-wide read. And it's a similar idea to, in our town, One Book, One Lincoln, um, where, you know, obviously people in Lincoln aren't required to read the book. It's just they buy a bunch of copies at the city library, and it's encouraged and talked about, and there's activities and book clubs. And that's what we do. No one in our school is required to read it. We buy 50 copies of the book every year. We um, promote it, promote it, promote it. We have book clubs and all kinds of things. And um, we hang up lots of signs, and we promote it on our web page. Um, in the past, I think any made this year, but we've also made stickers that they could put on their little planner they carry around saying, I'm a proud reader of whatever that your book was, just trying to saturate the environment with it so that they um, hold their interest and keep it going. So, our first question I thought I'd start with is, why do we do an all-school read? Um, we wanted to permit, promote a sense of community, and so when I say one book, one school, one community, in our experience, what we've mostly done is our school community. Um, I've been in middle school, grades 6 to 8, and I have, that's, I've always taught this level, but I find it's difficult sometimes. Um, they're here such a short period of time. They don't have the independence that high schoolers do where they get to be. We don't have as many sports. We don't have pep rallies. Like It's hard to 
find a way to make these kids here in these three short years proud of where they're from. And this is one way that we do that. Um, we know that by doing an all-school read, it increases personal reading. It gives the teachers, and we always welcome parents um, and community members and the students, um, the common ground for discussion and growth for a book. I mean, if you have one book that you can talk to kids about and you're a health teacher, that's a foot in the door. If you are, you know, a kid who doesn't like to read but you read one book, this all school read, that's a foot in the door. Um, and we uh, always choose a book that helps students connect to some sort of cause in the world, helps broaden their horizons and gives them some action to take. So, with that in mind, let's talk about how we got started at my school because it was truly an accident. And while I do a lot of work for it now, I was not even the one who started this program. Um, it started my first year at this school. Um, I went to the first staff meeting and um, the teachers were talking about, one of our committees was saying our school goal is to promote personal reading. And I looked around and I thought, I am in heaven. <laughs> How did I end up at this school where the teachers already all agree they want to increase personal reading? And um, along with that, um, a social studies teacher um, who used to teach language arts came to me and said, do you have any book you recommend? I want to do a read aloud with my social studies class. And so I uh, found her a book, which I'll reveal in a moment. Um, and that same committee that I mentioned um, with their goal of supporting personal reading because um, they had studied the 40 developmental assets, as you see here, that teens need to succeed. And one of those on that list um, is um, personal reading. And so, or reading for pleasure, it says there on your 25. And so um, they started thinking, and this social studies teacher said to me, what if we read this to the whole school? And I said, do we have some money? <laughs> and amazingly, um, an anonymous staff member uh, donated the money to buy 50 copies of that first book. And they were, you know, five bucks because they were paperbacks, which was perfect. But um, yeah, thanks to that person, we um, were able to buy those books and get started. So year one was in 2012-13, and we chose the book A Long Walk to Water, the one I had recommended to the social studies teacher. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, it is by Linda Stupark. Park. It tells the story of um, Salva Dutt, a real uh, Sudanese boy who survived the um, Sudanese Civil War and walked thousands of miles as one of the lost boys of Sudan and um, survived and um, lived to tell his tale. And the book alternates chapters with another narrator um, who is fictional. And um, she is a girl living in uh, modern day Sudan. And she doesn't get to go to school because she has to take a long walk to water every day because um, they don't have access to clean, safe water. And so she has to walk four hours a day to get water. Salva grows up and he wants to do something about this. And there is a real organization um, that Salva that started to bring water to these cities in Africa. So it was just a fantastic book. Um, we got started a little late because we didn't plan on this program and we didn't order these books until October. And so we started promoting it in November. We have a homeroom type time once a month. And so I made a little video and a little lesson about it. And um, we have we had a little under 800 kids that year, and the book circulated 300 times. And being a short book, a lot of teachers also used it as a read aloud. But we were so excited. I mean, that's, I don't know, 40% of our kids reading that book. So we were, we were just 
stoked, and it lit a fire under me that I didn't even know was there, and other teachers too. So we started making some connections. Um, one of our staff members, and this is the beauty of this program, I do not take full credit for it, the staff members in our building just started finding connections and saying, can we do this, can we do that? Uh, we have a social studies teacher who found out about a group, it's one of many, it's similar to Salva Dutt's foundation, um, called H2O for Life, and um, they help schools start clubs, and he started it, and they actually sold bottled water to students and parents at events and things, and they raised $400, and it was sent to, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, Lusanya Junior School in Uganda, and this picture is a photo of the very well and the very kids that we helped, um, that our students helped fund. So that's them, and what a great connection, and we got a chance to share this information and this story in this picture with our students afterwards. Wow, that um, is, yeah, wow, that is really amazing, yeah, <laughs> to see that yeah, it's, it's not just reading a book and having fun and talking about it, but putting something tangible into effect because of it. Yes, and it was so, again, it was just our first book, but what we really realized, the power of these reads and the, mm -hmm. how important the selection of a book is. Right, and that, their eyes <coughs> that, was, that was something I was going to ask, is how was this particular book um, picked to begin with? <laughs> uh, the social studies teacher asked me what would be a good social studies read aloud. <laughs> Ah. And I was familiar with it because it was nominated for one of our state awards, um, the Golden Sower, ah, I believe, okay. right. mm -hmm. several, a couple years before that, and I had loved it and had previously had a teacher read it aloud, and his kids loved it. Um, so yeah, again, it was just kind of all by accident the first time. It just grew. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and for um, anyone who's on the line who doesn't know what Golden Sower is, Nebraska's Children's Choice Award book award. So the kids themselves vote on which books um, um, would get the award each year. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so then another club that we had called Project Peace. Um, one of their teachers, um, sponsors, was doing a graduate school project um, through I think Doan College here in Lincoln. Or Crete, and um, they were working with a school in the Marshall Islands, very small part of the world, um, but very poor. And they, um, our kids helped with a fundraiser, and they raised five hundred dollars to um, purchase backpacks and school supplies for the kids at this school. And they sent us a video of them receiving them and them getting up. I mean, like every kid wanted to get up and tell us thank you. It was just Amazing, <laughs> just amazing what we got to see them do. Um, another aspect of that first year, we had a new ELL teacher. Now, we no longer have an ELL program at our school, unfortunately. Um, but we were talking to one of the students. She was doing a read aloud of this book for them. And one of the students mentioned that her mom was one of the lost girls of Sudan, which are often not as talked about as the lost boys because there weren't very many girls um, who walked for her safety and survived and then moved to the U.S. And with that in mind, we thought, oh my gosh, we got to get these kids involved in this research too. And so they each um, picked a self-selected research topic. So some of them chose to research waterborne illness. Some of them chose to research kind of the background of the Sudanese Civil War, um, things like that. So one of them researched more about Salva Dutt himself and like what he's doing today and his foundation. And um, we helped them make a Google presentation um, and they also kind of had to host to practice some of their manners and some of the social norms and greetings in the U.S. And so they all made these Google presentations. You can see in the picture they had to stand up in front of the class and some, the administrators and other teachers were invited. And they had to welcome them at the door and they had to offer them treats and <laughs> all that good stuff. And it was great to see that even these kids who are learning our language 
um, we're able to gain so much knowledge um, about the world and about um, even the plight of others. Some of these kids overcame great challenges to be here. And um, the, the student who shared that her mom was a lost girl, um, she started opening up in a way that she hadn't previously. And it was so moving. And we ended up, the ELL teacher and I ended up writing an article about it um, for a library magazine because we were just so excited to see uh, the connections they were able to make. So that's mostly uh, our first year. Um, so I guess I'll start year two. So um, toward the end of year one, I realized this is amazing and we have to do it again. So I started looking for a good book and Wander came across my desk and in the spring of 2013. And I was like, this is it. This is the one. It's got a great cause, and it's easy to read, and kids are going to love it. Uh, so I went to the principal, and our library director um, here in Lincoln always tells me, always go to the principal with an idea. <laughs> so uh, at my appraisal, Den de Gear, he happened to mention, well, I have some funds. Um, if you can think of something that would help promote reading, let me know. And I said, I have just the thing. <laughs> I found another book that should be our next one, Book Ones Go. And so in May, we ordered those, which means we had time to process them, and they were ready at the beginning of the year. So we were able to promote it right away, and we had a couple extra months of checking out that book and reading that book. The funding, actually, we were very lucky. I mean. You just never know what's going to happen. Um, it was funded by our school's namesake, Dr. Sko, um, donated the, the money, and he is just a huge supporter of reading. So every time we found our new book, it's come to see our projects and activities. Um, if you're familiar with the book Wonder um, or not, um, it's a about a boy named Bobby who was born with a cranial facial abnormality. and he uh, has never gone to public school because he's had so many surgeries and, and things. It hasn't been safe for him, actually, to be in school because um, he might get sick before surgery. And so I believe he's going to be in fifth grade, and he starts uh, public school. And the book is told um, in different voices, sometimes Augie, sometimes his sister, sometimes other kids at school. And it's just a fantastic read and such an interesting insight, again, to something that our kids don't often think about and a way to think outside themselves and think of others. Well, this book, you know, you can see it as a New York Times bestseller, and um, it took off that year, which helped us out tremendously. Um, there is an association called the Children's Craniofacial Association, um, CCA, and they were so excited that a book, a good book for kids, was finally talking about this um, rare, relatively rare um, types of disorders. And so they were promoting the heck out of it. And they had a program where we got to have our kids sign up online and they pledged to, um, to choose kind was the theme. And um, they, they had worked with... Um, uh, bracelets that say choose kind and so we handed those out to kids who were being awesome friends and things like that. Um, that book circulated over 550 times. I'm, I'm counting all 50 copies. That's a total of 550 times. Um, my next slide here shows a little bit more about the Craniofacial Association and I share this because maybe you want to choose a book and maybe you're going to try one of ours here's some resources that are already there. And you are welcome to connect with me. My email is on the first slide. I have set up lots of links and connections to those things that I'd be happy to share. Um, so they have special books you can get. We got teacher packets. Um, we did the Choose Kind Challenge. The most amazing thing, though, was if you see on the bottom of the left there, it says connect to a real life Augie. That meant a real life student with a craniofacial disorder. And we were so fortunate that um, we were able to connect um, 
with that group. And our first friends got a visit from a real life Augie, a girl with a facial abnormality. And she was so sweet. And uh, we couldn't, she's, you know, she's in third grade, I think, at the time. And we could not put her in front of an audience of almost 800 middle schoolers, um, even though she was with her mom. And her mom talked a lot. Uh, so we said, how can we make this a little more um, friendly for a third grader? And so we have a group here. Our counselors are fantastic. And they, every year, choose um, small groups from each grade to be first friends. And these are students who are leaders, who are positive, who are helpful. And every time we get like a new student at school, um, they um, help orient them and they sit with them at lunch and take them to their classes and so we thought these were a natural fit for kids to come learn about um, what it's like for a kid who's different sometimes and some of the struggles they went through and lots of them had read the book too so it was really great. I see these kiddos, they're our eighth graders now so I'm seeing all their little pictures up here. <laughs> that's that's a great program and that yeah you don't want to scare the poor little the poor girl coming in to see the, the school. I could see that being in. Yeah, something you have to think about. Yeah. <laughs> and I just want to mention, well, you had mentioned the, the links and everything to the different organizations. Um, as we're going through this, I will be grabbing links to any of the groups, the books, um, uh, the organizations that April and the school worked with. So um, I'll have them all collected at the end of the show when the recording goes up for everybody so you can have some quick links to um, everything that she's mentioned here today. Lovely. Yes. Do we have any questions yet, or do I keep trucking? Um, no, the only question we had, actually, you kind of mentioned as soon after they mentioned it, one, someone wanted to know if you'd ever considered doing the school-wide read-aloud, um, which is how you said you guys got started with this. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, well, we didn't do a school-wide read-aloud. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of a, if teachers want to read-aloud, they do, um, but... It's mostly teachers and staff reading on their own. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's something we've talked about. Our principal this year um, is really pushing um, a more personal reading, too. So it, it's something we're exploring. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's just wondering. I know you said some of them, especially from the first book that, well, when you first mentioned the first one, that they, a lot of the teachers in somehow involved it into the curriculum depending on how it could, you know, relate. Yes, and, you know, um, when they were studying Africa, they would, you know, it would be it was a good time to read it. Um, and when, um, just in general, that worldliness that they try to promote, it was a lot of social studies and language arts teachers who did a lot of that read aloud, I think. Yeah, yeah. the question was specifically, have you ever considered doing the school-wide read aloud so that all students can experience the book and the discussions? So it seems like for you guys, it was mainly a teacher-by-teacher teacher on a case-by-case -case basis deciding what could be brought into the individual classrooms. Correct. And I think, you know, some schools have like an everyday homeroom type of situation. Mm -hmm. That's a good that, place to do that, yeah. That would be a great time to do it. We don't have that ability. Mm -hmm. Um so it's harder to say, you know, well, first period, every day you've got to take 10 minutes out to read, even though your other five classes will have to be working on something else those 10 minutes. But mm -hmm. I, I would highly encourage that idea. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, year three, this was last year. Um, this was a funny year because uh, it was December of, the, of um, Reading Wonder, and I was do with my son any day, <laughs> and um, the day he decided to be born, I had been at the city library getting this book, Iqbal, um, and I read it on maternity leave and said, this is it, this is the book. <laughs> and um, So he helped you out. <laughs> lesser known, he totally did. Um, a little lesser known, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Iqbal is based on the life of Iqbal Masi, a real boy who lived in Pakistan and um, was a, a child a slave in a carpet factory. Um, his family uh, sold him to the carpet dealer because they had um, an unimaginable debt that they would never be able to repay. And that's very common in that part of the world. Even though it's illegal everywhere, it happens everywhere. And 
Um, the debt his family owed was equal to $10. $10. And that just floored me. And uh, looking back at our other books, we'd done this global kind of look at the world with Long Walk to Water, and then we did a little bit more local with the, with the wonder, and so I thought, I think it's time for another global book. And um, I had no idea um, that child slavery, or slavery in general, to be quite honest, was still so common around the world, and I did not know what industries were most guilty of it, and I did not know how much it really does. Um, we really do have an impact on what we buy and wear. <laughs> so, reading this book um, got me all inspired, so we ordered it in April, and uh, we were able to check it out to teachers who wanted to read it at the May staff meeting. So I let them keep it all summer, so I got more teachers reading it, which was really great. And it's another very short little book. Um, and it circulated 333 times that year. And that's a picture of me checking it out at staff meeting, but basically forcing it on them. You can go all summer. You can take it. <laughs> It'll be just fine. So what kind of connections did we make this year? Because remember, every book has a cause that goes with it. Um, this year, we um, there is a group called the Red Thread Movement. And they make these, you can see the picture, those red bracelets that you tie on. Um, and it's meant to be like a conversation piece, just like the Choose Kind bracelets or the, you know, the yellow bracelets people wear. Um, they are made by women trying to um, escape human trafficking in, uh, I want to say, Nepal? Don't quote me on that. Um, and we sold them just to staff members. We felt at this uh, level at middle school level we didn't human trafficking is very broad it's not just like labor it also involves um, sexual exploitation and that was not a topic we really felt comfortable getting into with kids so um, we stayed a little more broad but we did sell those to teachers and raised ninety dollars for that cause um, this year um, we had a couple teachers it's not even me it's amazing what happens when teachers get on board. Um, they said, can we start a student breakfast and book club? And I said, yeah, you want to use the library? <laughs> and so they did. <clears throat> I can't do it in the morning due to my own family situation, but they did, and they still do it today. Um, Project Peace Club that year um, raised $864 for goats in Nicaragua. So, and they learned and taught all of us during our homeroom time about how a goat makes a family more independent and self-sustainable so that their kids can go to school and so they do have an income from selling the milk and selling any baby goats um, so that um, they can hopefully you know escape some poverty and you know families don't have to sell their children into slavery. Um, student council did food drive um, and they also served meals at our local soup kitchen, the Matt Talbot kitchen. And then this is where a lot of magic happened. So every time I choose a book or I look for a book, and it's not just me, I run it by other people, but for some reason everyone seems content to let me <laughs> choose some books and they're cool with it. <laughs> um, I was looking for sources of information for kids on what they could do about slavery and human trafficking if we're going to use this as our cause. And I found this organization called Free the Children. And it is directly tied to the real life of Iqbal Masi. Um, there was a boy in Canada um, at the time of Iqbal's life and death. Um, his name was Craig Kielberger. And he was a middle schooler at the time. And he uh, read about the untimely death of Iqbal. If you Google it, I'm not really ruining it for you. Iqbal was murdered as a child for a standing up to slave owners. And Craig, this you know middle schooler, read this online or in the newspaper and was outraged. He just, for whatever reason, he could not get over it and he could not get past it. And he started talking to his parents and he started talking to his teachers and people in his community and he decided he wanted to motivate kids to do something. And as a middle schooler, started a group, Free the Children. Now, 
I didn't look at the map. I don't know if we have anybody from Canada, but if you lived in Canada, everybody knows Craig Kilberger and everybody knows Free the Children, but not as well known in the United States. Um, he has made this his life's work. He's, you know, maybe in his upper 20s, early 30s now. I don't know. And this is what he and his brother do with their life. Uh, Free the Children um, helps fundraise for things like goats around the world and helps um, raise money for education around the world. You just have to look them up. They are amazing. And we learned so much that we were able to tell kids about. Um, and I really hope you'll check out about their website. So based on that, then we started looking and we found out that Free the Children has what they call we day and the theme of we is moving from me to we and that was something we loved teaching our kids it fits right in with developmental apps assets and um, being part of a larger community so uh, we contacted them and we found out that they were doing their first ever year of we day celebrations in the United States um, they've done them for years in Canada, and they are doing them here. And they were doing one in Chicago, which is about eight, eight and a half hours from here driving. And um, so we put our name in, and We Day is like a giant concert. There are rock stars and movie stars, and um, in this picture, that's Craig Kielberger in the blue jacket. We got to meet him. We couldn't believe it. Um, he, I know, I'm gushing. It was <laughs> no, well, no. I think it's totally, totally appropriate. That would be very, <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, you can't buy a ticket to We Day. You have to earn it. Thousands. This filled the Allstate Arena in Chicago. Wow. Filled. We're talking like ten thousand kids, and um, so to earn it. Um, we had to talk about all the projects our school was doing, and your school, anybody can join. Um, your school has to pledge to do one global act and one local act. And so this was our first time, and so our local act was our food drive and our soup kitchen work with our student council. And then our global acts were the ones that um, Project Peace did with uh, Nicaragua and what the staff did with the red thread bracelets. And um, based on that, they got back to us and said, you, we have 15 tickets to offer your school. So we sat down with those two club leaders, because they had done the most uh, work, and we said, who are your most involved kids, your most dedicated? And um, they picked them. And um, our PTSO very graciously funded our trip. And we rented three minivans, and we took, I think, four or five staff members and we all drove these kids to Chicago and spent the night in a hotel and then all day at Allstate Arena and you can see here we got there a little early and we we're looking at this guy standing beside us and we're like isn't that Craig? <laughs> so we had to go and say hi and take a picture and tell him how far we came um, and this was before the event um, but so this We Day is huge and so there's all kinds of videos online you can see. So I think I've got time. I might show a little bit of this video really quickly. Um, this is not live from our event, but they're very similar to this. Um, and we ended up being so lucky, too. When we were getting ready for our trip, they sent us these uh, permission forms. Said every you know, student has to have their parents sign this because we are recording the Chicago event for a live national broadcast on ABC television in August. So it was in April, but it aired then. So we, I didn't see myself on TV, but we were there. So let me show you a little clip of this if I can. Born out of this earth, two brothers, you have the desire to the hope that the world can be a better place. They called it We Day. Born out of this earth, a call that brings a generation together 
for all issues you care about. More than an event, it launches a year of actions for social change. You can't buy a ticket to me. You earn it through service. Tens of thousands in attendance. Hundreds of thousands watching online. Millions watching on TV. Born out of a dream. For us to be there. For the world to be there. Youth is not wasted on you. We day is our generation. We day is the movement of our time. <laughs> With courage, here's a majority. There is no room like this room anywhere on the planet. We Day is more than a one-day event. It launches a year-long series of actions to better our global community. And we make that commitment today. So I'm going to stop it there, but did that audio work okay? Um, yes, yep, it came through nice and clear. A little choppy because we're like broadcasting it over online, but I grabbed the URL for this and it will be included in the links afterwards so everybody can go and watch the whole thing themselves. All right, I didn't want to do it all and I didn't know how it was yeah. working, but um, so basically, as you see, it's not about taking a trip, it's not about meeting Craig, it's about these guys spend their life motivating students like ours, like yours, to make a difference in the world, and that is the best thing I've ever done teaching. <laughs> and that is why I love the direction our school is going and the way we've partnered up with Free the Children and um, We Day. So we get back from this super inspiring event and our kids are all talking about what they want to do next year and all this stuff. And let me tell you, they are our best spokespeople this year. Um, and we get an email and saying, tell us why your school believes in making a difference in the lives of children. You can be eligible for an award. Um, and uh, so our kids wrote about um, why they want to make a difference. And the We Day Foundation told us, guess what? You won. <laughs> and so in our honor, um, a thousand dollars was donated um, to adopt a village country. Um, I can't remember which country right now, but... <laughs> It was it was pretty amazing. So I feel like we keep getting lucky, and that doesn't normally happen to me. But <laughs> if anyone else is interested, you need to register your school at the beginning of the school year. Um, you should know that if you do your global and local and you get invited to We Day, and you should, um, be aware that details come really late. Like it was, this thing was at the end of April, not quite the end of April, and we were getting details like beginning of April. <laughs> so we kind of knew we'd have 15 tickets, but we didn't know when or where exactly. And so just don't be, pre be prepared to work hard at the very end. <laughs> um, and yeah, like I said, it was funded by PTSO and our student fundraiser. So that was amazing. And I got to go on that trip, which was just fantastic. And so we're kind of trying to build on that again this year and do more. Um, things in connection with We Day and our book. This year's book is called Rhyme Schemer. Um, I think it's becoming more common, but I don't know how many of you would have heard of this either. Um, it is a novel in verse about a boy named Kevin in middle school who is a bully. And he tells the story in verse, and he is. He's not very nice, and he's not very likable, um, but he start, he's kind of got away with words, and he doesn't really realize it, and he starts, um, he gets in trouble, and so he uh, is assigned to duties in the library, of course, and he starts, he finds like the old classic books like Peter Pan and Secret Garden or whatever, he claims nobody reads anymore, and he starts um, tearing out pages and making kind of blackout poetry out of it, or what's sometimes called found poetry, where he circles certain words in it to make a poem. And sometimes they're very deep, and sometimes they're very funny. And um, you really learn a lot about, like, kind of why he's a bully and how he overcomes it. And the tables turn, and now the bully is being bullied. And so it's been a real eye-opening book for kids. Um, we bought it in April again, let teachers read it over the summer. Um, we've had some small classes reading it together um, when we've had multiple copies in. Uh, this slide's outdated. We already have a book club started, and uh, they have breakfast and read. 
Um, Project Peace and Student Council, again, are working to earn We Day. And um, as of October, it circulated 200 times. I haven't had a chance to run the numbers, but I'm really hoping it's a lot more than that by now. But it's another short little fast book. The author's second book is also now out on a totally different subject, and that one's fantastic, too. I can't recommend it enough. So when we taught the kids about the book in our little homeroom time, um, we kind of did have them write their own kind of blackout or found poetry. So this was just a couple examples. I'm not saying they're fantastic necessarily, but it was really fun, and it gives you an example of what Kevin's poems in the book look like. I liked this one. Mm -hmm. Those are really creative. I like that. Yeah, there's another one. <laughs> Can you see the words there? Yep. Awesome. One more. <laughs> and we didn't give them any, like, topics or anything. They just said, what, what can you make? So it was fun. <laughs> um, so this year, we're keeping... Um, our connections to helping others and looking outside yourself the way Kevin in the book finally learned to do and, and being kind to others. And um, we're working with We Day again, or Free the Children, and they have lots of campaigns, projects that they like try to promote and get schools to do. I don't know if you ever had one of these administrators. I love our administrators, but they say, let's do all of them. I said, seriously? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, she did come and say, I've worked out a schedule. In October, we'll do this because of this, and we'll do November because of this. I said, okay. So different clubs and different people are in charge of them, but um, and some are bigger than others. Um, so let me see if I can get these in order. Um, we started with We Take Charge, which is about um, doing something to promote taking care of the environment, um, you know, recycling, saving energy, all those types of things, saving water. And so during a little homeroom time, we all wrote, we watched some videos about things you could do. This one's my favorite. You should totally look it up. It's um, a video on, like, the correct way to use a paper towel. <laughs> you know those cheap brown paper towels in the um, bathrooms yeah. that don't absorb anything? Uh -huh. This video shows you just have to fold it in half. And then it's super absorbent. Suddenly it works. <laughs> yeah. And if everybody in the world, or everybody in the United States used one paper towel in there each day instead of two or three, I, I can't remember the billions of paper towels that would be saved in trees. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. <laughs> so we showed things like that. We brainstormed about, you know, taking a shorter shower. We talked about unplugging your cell phone when it's charged, uh, you know, from the wall. Uh, we talked about um, not running the water when you brush your teeth. Uh, I kind of, you know, there's lots of things that we went over with that one. They made pledges with that. Um, one of our other big ones is the We Scare Hunger that we did, which is a Halloween time food drive. So this was our second year doing it, and it's super fun. Um, we, uh, our student council delivered um, paper bags donated by the grocery store, um, and they walked them around the neighborhood and left them on doorsteps in our neighborhood with a little note saying, we'll pick these up on Friday, I don't know if it was October 30th or what, if you leave them on your doorstep. And so they did. And then we get a bunch of teachers and stuff to bring their trucks and volunteer and drive around, and some of us walk with them, and we all pick up all these bags of food. And uh, we did that in October. It went great. Um, what else did we do? Oh, this one's an ongoing one. We are Rafikis. This is one of the ways these Rafiki bracelets are one of the ways that we, the ch Free the Children, raises money for their efforts. And um, they have different colored bracelets that you donate money to different causes, so you can choose if you want to donate by a bracelet that supports clean water or a bracelet that supports um, food or education or health. And we've been selling those at each of our conferences, and there's another event coming up. Um, i got to talk faster. <laughs> we Are Silent was another big one. We spent our day, um, we prepped all the kids, and we had them take a pledge of silence. Um, for all those people who don't have voices, whether they are 
slaves or they're bullied or something like that. Um, and they spent an entire lunch period of that whole day not talking. And it was really interesting to see because that doesn't normally happen. <laughs> and they each wrote about who they were, um, you know, the remaining silent four. And we had this beautiful big mural in the hallway now with all of their stickers on it of who they're standing up for. Um, we Step Up is a movement-based one, and we haven't done that one yet, but it's kind of been our theme this year, as in we step up, we help out. And every time we post to our Facebook or our Twitter page we, about something great we're doing, we tag it, Sco Steps Up. Um, so that's kind of been our theme. And each month, our counselors choose um, student leaders who are recognized for being a great part of the community and stepping up, and they get a Sco Steps Up t-shirt. Um, we just did We Are Love, um, and it's still kind of going on. It's kind of timed around Valentine's Day to um, be kind to each other in a lot of the ways Wonder talked about. Um, we kind of went with the route uh, talking about online and how easy it is to forget that there is a person behind the screen or behind the text. And uh, we did, we showed an interactive video. I hope you can find this, Krista. It's called Words Hurt, made by the Canadian government, and you choose your reply, and based on your reply, you can see, like, on her pretend webcam how she reacts. So we had them try it with bully-type answers and friend-type answers, and that was really powerful. Um, we're making another mural in the hallway filled with, you know, inspirational quotes and things, and all of our teachers are going to tape a note um, so that every kid in the school has a, a nice note from their teacher on their locker on Valentine's Day. Um, yeah. So let me talk about the positive outcomes. Um, we have loved seeing, and I mean we like the staff, have loved seeing our kids connect with the larger community, the food drive in the neighborhood, the global connections and understanding it just puts you in such a different frame of mind when you realize, like, oh, I hate going to school, but this kid can't go to school because she has to walk four hours for water, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, there has just generally been more talk about reading, and staff have something to read and talk about. Um, there's been more excitement about books. Um, you know, you still have some staff, this is the only book that they read all year. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, that's one more book than they were reading before, and that is a win to me, and that's why I want to keep it going. Um, and the way it brings clubs and staff together in our theme and in our quest to um, teach them to make a difference about the world. Um, so where do we go from here? We're always trying to get more speakers and authors to come. Um, we want to connect to more Lincoln sources if possible. Um, parents, organizations, neighborhood. Um, we're always looking for more ways to celebrate those who read. You know, it's hard when it's not mandatory or really kept track of. Um, and we're trying to get staff to read more in general. Um, the principal had me make up some signs for everybody's door that said, your teacher is currently reading so that they um, can write down even if it's a magazine or you know, adult book, it doesn't matter. Uh, we want to just get that culture of reading. And I don't know if my next slide came. I must have missed it. I almost had a heart attack before this <laughs> uh, presentation started. It was two minutes till it was supposed to start, Krista. Uh -huh. And my administrator walks in, like I'm getting my coffee before we start, and she says, I have amazing news. And I said, I have going to start a webinar. What is it? She was, you have to hear this. And she said, we won. And I said, what did we win? <laughs> she said, as a school in the Meet a We program, we were in a drawing. I put our name in the drawing um, to win a speaker to come to our school from the Meet a We organization. Nice. And He's coming in like two weeks. His name is Spencer West, and I tried to add it to the slideshow, but I think maybe it got deleted. Oh, I gotta go. Oh, that's okay. I'll find it. 
Um, it, yeah. He's coming. He is an inspirational speaker. We saw him at We Day. He um, lost both his legs below his pelvis um, when he was a child. And despite all that, he's climbed Mount Kilimanjaro with his hands and his wheelchair. Wow. And he loves talking to students about overcoming obstacles and working hard. So we are so excited. <laughs> well, congratulations. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, if you want to, Never yeah, go ahead and, um, cause I'll tell you what we do also usually grab these PowerPoint slides of the presenters, yeah. add it to your slides and get it in there, get the information in there, then send it to okay. me. And then I'll add that fin that with the additional information up to the recording. Okay. So you get I have a feeling I need to put in the wrong spot. So we'll keep going. <laughs> That's okay. Well, how do you try it at your school? If you're watching, you probably want to know, what do I think about? So I think this is a really important slide. When we choose a text, but like it or not, you have to think about cover appeal. When you are voluntarily getting kids to pick up a book, it cannot look super girly. I feel boys read it, and it can't look, you know what I mean? Like, it's got to be pretty wide appeal. Think about the length and the text size. Like, I was a little worried about Wonder because it was a longer book. But then when I looked at text size, I realized, oh, there's a lot of white space. It won't be as long to read. Appealing to both genders, thinking about the reading level, and is it appropriate for all levels? Um, does it have a cause associated with it? One of my favorite pages is linked there. It's called amightygirl.com. Um, I also follow them on Facebook because they're always teaching me about wonderful women in history and today, um, and they have a link, they always recommend awesome books, and one of their pages is about social issues, so I'm always looking at those books to find the next one book in school. Um, ask other teachers whose opinions you know you think are good, or maybe you have a committee that you want to start. Um, we are trying to alternate a global and local focus. I still have not found a book for next year, so I don't know if it's going to happen, but hopefully I can find a global focus book next year. Um, and then can you locate or curate some resources for teachers to help with this topic and would it make a good read aloud? Um, you, you guys probably already know about purchasing, but um, can you get a discount in a bookstore or your book jobber or online where you get the best deal? Um, my book jobber through the district had the best price, but it was going to take weeks and weeks. So I called Barnes & Noble and I said, hey, if you match a price, I'll buy them from you and get them in four days. And they said, okay. <laughs> so I got them faster and was able to get them out to teachers for summer. Um, and if you can, plan ahead. Try to have it ready before you start school. But, you know, we've done it both ways. Um, promoting the book. If you can, show the teachers before the next school year so they have more time to think about it and know about it. Homeroom type time is a great place to read excerpts and do lessons. Um, if the book has a book trailer, that's awesome. Um, I spoke, or I always speak to my kids about it at the beginning of the art library orientation. I visit reading classes. We have signs, 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 displays. We have one shelf that every year now, that is the one book ones go shelf. And then we even put out last year's winner or the other year's nominees. Um, and find an easy way to put books on hold. Our system doesn't allow our students to do it, but we do it through Google Form. Um, these are some of our signs. Um, encourage teachers to take the lead in any way they see fit. I told you some of the teachers were doing college classes and they found connections. I hang up this green sign this year for everyone, a teacher who's read it. I do that every year. Um, share related news articles. Oh, there's my thing about Spencer. There he is. <laughs> I could not. Oh. <laughs> And um, share it with the world. That's been, aside from starting this program, my second favorite thing has been telling everyone I know um, and writing articles or whatever. So I talked a lot. <laughs> Are there any other questions? That's great. Um, yeah, so we did have a couple. Um, someone did ask, uh, well, you already answered the question, what book were you considering for next year? They were pre-thinking you know, ahead for you. Um, and they said just how, um, sorry? I can tell you the ones I'm considering. It's, not, it's in no way final. Uh, um, there's two global ones I'm considering. Half a World Away. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's by, I want to say by Katahata, but I might be wrong. And it's about a family that adopts a boy from Mongolia. Or Kazakhstan. I think it's Kazakhstan. It's been a while since I read it. Um, 
And then my other option might be a book called Look Both Ways in the Barrio Blanco. And it's about the children of illegal immigrants. And it's a very realistic view of what that's like. And it's a good middle school level. So that one might be a contender. Um, the, two, the few that I like for a more local issue, um, I like We Are All Made of Molecules. It's a book about a boy dealing with his father's death and uh, remarriage and a very mean stepsister. Um, but we haven't really done a book about death like that, you know, and dealing with grief. Um, I've also thought about Fish in a Tree, you know, about the girl who can't read uh, or thinks she can't. And then El Defo um, by C.C. Bell about um, what it's like to be deaf. I thought that was another good one. But another question? Well, yeah, lots of ideas. Um, uh, question: Do you have do you try to balance? I know you try to balance uh, global and local, but what about fiction and nonfiction? Is that that's a good question? Um, I have no problem with nonfiction, and I would be happy to include it if I found the right book. And mm -hmm. like I said, there's a lot of criteria, um, and I hope someday it will. Some of these books have crossed into the based on true story things, so I feel like right we we're, we're close. We're definitely open to it. Um, it just has to be a really engaging book. So right. We always buy companion books. So, you know, when we were studying Iqbal, lots of books about um, Free the Children and about child slavery and other books about Iqbal that were nonfiction. So we have those out on display, too. Um, same with Wonder and Sudan and things. But mm -hmm. I haven't found the right one yet. Mm -hmm. um, and another question came in. Uh, you said you get uh, 50 copies of the books each year for circulation. Yeah. Um, this librarian says they're, you know, I know my library is constantly trying to weed for shelf space. Do you keep all 50 <laughs> copies of the books for following years or do you then get rid of some of them? For, or do you have space issues with that, that every year you're buying so many copies of the single title? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so we only put a few on the shelf. And we put the others back in a storage room. Um, and here's why. We have a couple reasons. One, like, just because we read it last year doesn't mean that the sixth grade social studies teacher might not want to read it with her class next year. Mm -hmm. And so if I have a class set, that's awesome. Uh, so I have been hesitant. It's only been four years. I've been hesitant to get rid of any yet. Um, but they are in a back storeroom because, yeah, I don't got room on the shelf for right. 50 copies of each piece. Mm -hmm. um, there has been taught, oh, well, so then, because I tell everyone, some of my other librarians within our school, um, Lincoln Public Schools, have borrowed. And so sometimes it's for a month, you know, a teacher borrows. Mm -hmm. And That's one year, we loaned all of our copies of Wonder to another middle school, and they used it for their, their, their one book, one book, one book. And this year, we loaned several copies of Long Walk to Water to a school to do a project. Um, and uh, and then I also know that if we need to, um, our Nebraska Library Commission has um, like book bag checkouts. We do. Yeah. Book club. Book club. Yeah. Book yeah. Book yeah. That's yeah. what I meant. So if if I do decide to weed, you know, and the other schools don't need a mass amount of copies, that's probably where I'll give them. Yeah, the library commission does book club. Yeah, the library does book club. Where we send um, a bag of. Uh, however many books and reading lists and, and information about how to run your own book club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? Um. Let's see. We just have. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. I just I'm saying how wonderful all the projects were that you did. Good. Say what? Just how was just someone saying how wonderful all the projects were that you did. Oh. <laughs> that the books inspired. Yeah. yeah, it I think my biggest advice would be don't be afraid to try it. And don't worry if you don't know what you're gonna do with it yet, because if you I really hope you love the staff you work with and I hope you have even a few that you're close with, you'll be amazed what happens. We didn't know what was gonna happen. <laughs> we certainly didn't know it would be every year. We didn't know how powerful it would be, just try it. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> right. Um, we do have a question from someone. Um, Dave Makesdorf up at our South Sioux City. I've got you unmuted, Dave. Can you talk? 
Unmuted. Hello, this is April. Dave, you're unmuted if you want to. Dave, you're unmuted if you want to. Not hearing anything, though. Not hearing anything, though. Yeah. It told me I was muted and unmuted, but... Well, Dave, if you want to type in your question, could you do that? Because I'm not hearing you. I've got you unmuted on our side, but I'm not hearing anything. Unmuted. Any luck? No. no. Let's see if he gets not typed in. Uh, Dave, we can't hear you, so you type in your question. I'll give you another minute or two to be able to do that while we wrap up here. Oh, wait, here we go. Oh, he just typed in, excellent program. I worked with a high school that um, all subjects participated in the topic. Okay, say that again. He said he worked with a high school that all subjects participated in the topic up in South Sioux City, I guess. Oh. Yeah. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. I'm, I said I don't think uh, we're the first people to invent it, but I do think we've got a good thing going, and <laughs> we're keeping it moving. <laughs> Absolutely, definitely. Absolutely. All right. Um, All right. I'm gonna unmute you. Uh, I'm, gonna unmute. I'm gonna mute you just for a second, April. Um, I'm getting some feedback suddenly from your speakers. It looks like um, I suddenly started hearing myself feedback through. I don't know if you changed your setup there or something. No, I didn't change anything. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. It's it's weird. I'm just I'm hearing weird. myself I'm feedback. Hearing myself <laughs> feedback. <laughs> I'm not uh -huh. sure if anyone else hears that or not. Sure no, I don't know. All right, all right. Uh, he just also says science can figure out water problems, etc. For what the, Dave was talking about, what they did with their school. Yeah. So we're trying to get connected with everything. All right. Well, I think we'll wrap it up. We're a little after um, uh, 11 o'clock, so I want to not run too long for us. Um, so uh, thank you. Thank you, April. Thank you very awesome. much for asking me to speak about my favorite thing. <laughs> and that's pretty obvious that it is, yes. Um, it's a great program. It sounds like you guys have done some really cool, fun things. And just getting the kids involved and so so, doing all these social things, and, these and, social things and, and just being able to do something proactive and, and useful for the rest of the world, I think, is a very cool yeah. aspect of it. Yeah. Well, thanks again, everybody, for coming. Yeah, thank you very much, April. Yeah, thank, thank you, everyone, you. for coming. As I said, the show has been recorded, and it will be available later this afternoon, potentially. It, takes, it depends on how long it takes it to uh, process. Um, See, I'm going to switch over to sharing my screen here now. There we go. There we go. Um, as I said, I was saving the um, links. And so here is where I have in our delicious account, we put all of our um, the links from all of the books that uh, April mentioned, uh, the websites that you talked about. I tried to grab all the videos. I think I got everything in here. <laughs> um, so this will be included afterwards when the recording is available. Uh, also, the, uh, the recording will be here on our Encompass Live website. If you go to, these are our upcoming shows, but right beneath that we have a link to our archived Encompass Live sessions where we have all of our previous shows are posted here. So this one will be there and the PowerPoints will be included um, if April um, April, you would send those to me afterwards. Send those send to me afterwards. I can put them up here. I can put them up here. Sounds great. Cool. Uh, cool. Those will be here. The links will be here, and um, you'll be able to um, either watch this again or share it with your colleagues. Um, 
So that will wrap it up for today's show. I hope you join us next week, though, when our topic is teaching digital literacy with techboomers.com and other online resources. Uh, techboomers got that. Techboomers.com is a relatively new website, I believe, last year, maybe the year before, that has been um, uh, created with tutorials about teaching digital literacy to um, adults, and they have web web. Uh, videos and training and all sorts of things and it's getting more and more they're always adding new topics to it so Steve Black who is from techboomers.com will be with us to talk about that next Wednesday um, so hopefully you'll join us for that and any of our other upcoming shows we have listed here on our website also Encompass Live is on Facebook so if you are a big Facebook user to, please do go over there and like our page we post um, notices of when the shows are coming up here it shows a uh, reminder to log in for this week's show right before it started and when the recording Recording is available. I put a reminder up here as well, letting people know the recording is up. So if you are big on Facebook, please do go over there and give us a like so you can keep up with us. Other than that, that wraps it up for this morning. Thank you very much for attending this week's Encompass Live, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>